while at Mercyhurst, you were among the, more of the prolific scorers in the school's history and everything like that. But for somebody that doesn't necessarily know you from Division II, what sort of has been uh, your experience as somebody from a smaller school and trying to get started in the overseas game? Now, granted, this was back in 2008, as you've now had an over decade long career. But what was that experience like for you as a Division II athlete going pro? It was very, um, how can I say, you got you to gotta have a lot of faith, man, because I really didn't know when that call was coming, how the process was going to be. I was basically trusting everyone's word. Um, an assistant coach of mine, he basically told me, hey, I got a guy who uh, is working for a club in Germany. I would like to send him your stuff and we'll see what happens. You know, that type of thing. It wasn't yeah, we got this agent, this, you know, agents are knocking down my door or something like that to sign me. It wasn't anything like that. So <clears throat> my assistant coach, like I said, he sent my uh, my tape and my my resume, my CV over to the general manager of this this club, Gladbach, in Germany. And um, apparently, you know, he liked it. Uh, he sent the contract within a few days. And, you know, that was that. I really didn't have any other options. This was the only contract that I had. So I thought this was the route I had to take. Um, very low money, very low accommodations, very low level. Everything was, it was, it, it was part of my journey, you know, something that I had to do in the beginning. So the, the experience was very like, I didn't know what was going to happen, when it was going to happen, but I just had faith that it would. And I stayed ready the entire time. And so at this point, you didn't actually have an agent. You just basically signed on to this lower level team, right? <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea. And I had no one to ask. I didn't even know how the agent situation even worked. So, um, I mean, that, that story will evolve a little bit later. But like I said, I was just basically trusting the word of other people who kind of, you know, had an idea of how it worked or knew somebody, you know, because I really had no idea. Well, it's, it's a really good place to start. Uh, it's also kind of the way that we connected a little bit, too where you talked about your first year. Uh, I think that you said that you made $1,000 a month in that in the post that I saw online. Uh, one bedroom apartment shared with another American, shared the car, uh, worked yeah. at basketball camp. Take us through that first year for you. Yeah, at the time, the euro was much stronger than the dollar. So I believe I was really getting paid like 750 euros a month uh, in cash. Like the, the general manager would come to the apartment. I mean, like guy was like smiling, you know, just counting the little little money you know to us on the table because it was another wow. american too you know i think it was 750 or whatever it was um oh man the apartment was yeah it was one bedroom i got there it was like one uh full-size bed and then another bed was like a race car nask matchbox car bed like for a <laughs> child um it was ridiculous um, I was 22 at the time and the wait, other wait, American- wait, 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 which bed did you have? <laughs> exactly. This, this is how it goes. So, you know, the guy was 25 years old. I was 22, a rookie. And um, basically we, we, we compromised by saying, okay, you can keep the room. You're going to take the small bed, but I'm going to take the bigger bed and move it to the living room. So that's kind of how it happened. I moved the bigger bed outside. And I didn't have a room and Matt, which was his name, uh, took the, the room, but he, he had the matchbox. Bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was, that was embarrassing, man. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. We had two of everything in the kitchen. You know, he had his side of the refrigerator, I had my side of the refrigerator. He had his time to cook dinner. I would have my so time to cook dinner. It wasn't like a collaborative thing it was everything was separate. Um, he had his time to use the car. Oh, it was so annoying. Um, yeah, that is, what that else was in rough? Yeah, it was, man. And I didn't see it that way until later, obviously. But mm -hmm. at that time, I was just willing to do whatever. The coach, we had a coach from Chicago, actually, black guy from Chicago. Um, we practiced at, we didn't have a gym, so we had to mm -hmm. practice every night at some, I don't know what it was, auxiliary gym of some middle school the floor was all blue practice every night at eight eight o'clock finished at 10 p.m had to eat dinner every night at like 10 30 spaghetti bolognese every night saving money it was really rough um 
Yeah, man. <laughs> we had to work Tuesdays and Thursdays at a school doing a basketball clinic for an hour and a half. Uh, and then um, we've heard of that, yeah, uh, had that happening before. You say you've heard of that? Yeah, yeah. We've heard of uh, a few of our players that are doing like uh, had to do basketball clinics on the side and stuff like that. And that's usually worked into the contract that you get extra money to do it, though. Was it something that was a part of your contract and you got extra money or was it just that you had to do it? Man, later on, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, the other American was getting paid an extra 500 bucks in his contract oh, to, to do that. So he was getting paid 1500 a month and I was getting paid a thousand a month. And, you know why i'm doing the same job but i didn't get a 500 dollars. but i didn't i didn't realize at the time man. whatever it doesn't matter so yeah working these camps on tuesdays and thursday nights and practice at eight and games on saturdays that's how the basically how it was man wow wow how how did that go for you on the court then um so on the court <laughs> very interesting um we had two 44 year olds and <laughs> to uh like 17 year olds the the team wow. was so randomly composed um and then it had me and the other american we were both the guards uh on the outside and like i said we had 44 year olds on the team we had retired guys guys who worked at the post office to come to practice late at night it was a joke and um apparently they were expecting to be top in the league or whatever they wanted really but that was it was did anybody Impossible. actually scout the team? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's low level basketball. They just expect something. They expect the world. They would take Michael Jordan for a thousand dollars a month if they could. I'm you know? sure they would. They always want to get the extreme for low money. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I was playing well. You know, I was averaging 24 a game. They ended up cutting me because we were middle of the pack. They wanted more. So I'm like, what? They couldn't and get that was a whole nother situation. You're getting, they're yeah. getting 24 a game from a guy who's getting paid a thousand a month and they cut him. Yeah. And they cut me, cut me in December. Um, Andy, does this never... team still exist? We had we had the last interview, we had a team that doesn't exist anymore. I oh, it folded. Okay, sure. it folded. Okay. It folded. Well, there we go. Yeah. We we hit on it again. <laughs> this sounded like yeah, had, heading, heading down that no path idea what quickly. they were doing. All the signs were yeah, definitely no. there. I just wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no idea what they were doing, man. And um, yeah, they let me go. And not too far after that, yeah, the whole team folded, man. They were they were awful, terrible organization. So an inauspicious beginning to your career, uh, but you are a pro and you are in Europe. You had a pretty rough year in all facets of the game, but then you end up in the Czech Republic. So walk yeah. us through. How you go from, you know, this particular experience to ending up in the Czech Republic in a place you stayed a couple of years. Um, did you get an agent in that time? Like, how did how did this work out for you? I got to try to figure out how to put this into a short story. So, like I said, I was cut in December. I started my contract in August. Um, you know, I was playing all the way to December and I went home with two thousand bucks to my name, you know, trying to save and obviously I had to live, too. I had 2000 bucks. So obviously I have no money. I went to go live with my girlfriend um, in Erie, Pennsylvania, where my university was. And uh, obviously I wanted to still play basketball, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. So at that time, this was 2009, I had to go to Eurobasket.com. I had to look at each country and go to the agent list on the website. Oh, wow. The same way on we the web some things. Agent. <laughs> yes. I went on the agent list and I contacted every agent from like every country and basically had this uh, template that I wrote like, hey, my name is Terry Smith. I played in Munching, Gladbach, and I found Lions in Germany. I averaged 24 points. I went to Mercier's. You know, I explained everything and I'm looking for a new club. I sent that email maybe at least 30 times a day, literally. Even when I was in Germany at that time, we had to go to an internet cafe because our Wi-Fi in our part apartment didn't work well. You had to go to the internet cafe, which is a, like a room with like a whole bunch of computers set up on a land. People are like playing, you know, Warcraft or a lot of computer yeah. games in these places. This is a you very good pay. description. The, the, kid, the Gen Z uh, listeners need to hear this of what an internet cafe is. They don't yeah. know. Yeah, man. This is real back in the day, man. We talking about Skype days. We talking about 
you know, with the camera outside the monitor, I'm still using the tower computers, yeah, you know? Yeah. You only graduated a year after I did. So yeah, I, I get this, this, this sounds so you very get familiar it. to me. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. So anyway, yeah, I had to pay, I don't know what it was, maybe, you know, two euros for every 30 minutes to go in the internet cafe. Man. So sending these emails out to all these people waiting to hear back. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to get a job with my degree. I have a computer science degree. I'm not going to get a job with my degree. I'm going to continue to work out, try to find something to get money, but I'm going to just send these emails out and wait for somebody to hit me back. Um, I ended up becoming a substitute teacher. I was substitute teaching in Erie, Pennsylvania from um, February until June. So I was substitute teaching and um, I ended up, you know, kind of losing hope and I was a little bit depressed and my mom actually had some mother intuition, gives me a call, finds out that I, you know, basically doing nothing with my life. That's how I felt. Call my cousin who's in DC, human resources director down in DC. They got me an interview. I moved to DC. Now I'm doing IT down in DC and uh, my teammate who was Bosnian, played in Mercy Arts University, he was Bosnian. He was a Penn State transfer. He didn't play my entire senior year because he was coming back from ACL injury and he watched my entire senior year. This was first first team on conference, you know, all defensive team. Like, you know, I played well. The guy called me and said, hey, Terry, do you have a job? I said, uh, no. You know, he's like, you know, send me your stuff. Now, I've heard this a hundred times from people saying, hey, send me your stuff. We'll try to get you a job, you know, and it always falls through. It never works out. So this was just another scenario for me. Hey, a guy's asking for your tape and your resume let's see what happens whatever to my surprise i mean the next three days i had a three-year contract in my email and i'll never forget i was in dc with my family and i just started crying you know i'm like man damn i thought basketball was over i didn't know what was going to happen i see a three-year contract for more money than i've ever you know seen so far um you know at the time it was beautiful i i man, I got another chance. I'm going to the first division in Czech Republic and I'm going to play basketball again. Long story short, that was probably the worst decision I ever made to sign this contract because basically I signed my, my rights away. I had no agent. I read the contract, but this was my only option to get back from playing basketball. So I had to sign it. It was a um, one, one plus two. So one year, one year, plus two years on the club if they want to keep me. And I also had a, uh, a, a uh, tryout period. So I had a tryout period for one month where like they can cut me anytime. And if they like me, they'll keep me for the year plus two more years without a big increase in salary. Mm -hmm. This Nobody would sign this. Only a desperate person would sign this contract. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, I go there, I go to Czech Republic, it was a good, it was a good experience, man. They had like two or three cup teams. I was the second leading scorer of the league. Mm. And um, that's when agents started contacting me. I started getting agents in my emails. You know, now they're kind of knocking on the door. They're kind of asking like, who's your representation? Um, we can, we can do this for you. We can do that for you. So it's all looking great for me at the time. I'm like, okay, you know, my career basically can kind of start now. When the season finished, the coach basically said like, Hey, you got to, you know, two more years, you can't really get out this contract. And in my mind, I'm like, man, I, I, I play so well, I should get more money. I, I can't renegotiate this contract. I've outplayed this entire contract. No, there was nothing I could do. And that was because I didn't have an agent. Anyway, I come back the second year. I'm the leading scorer in the league. Now I'm like, man, I have to get out of here. Like there's no way I can stay on this, this team. Um, I, I give you a, this is a podcast, right? I can kind of say what I want to say. Right. Yeah, exactly. Please do. All right. But it, all right. So anyway, I'll make a, 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 this, this, I never really told this publicly, but I mean, I, I give it to you. Um, my second year, I made the all-star game. The all-star game is in Prague. You know, all the Americans are there who were chosen for the all-star game. And um, we go out. I ended up, you know, going out, getting really drunk. I'm 20, four years old at the time, get really drunk. And uh, I tried to drive my car over a meridian in, in the between the street, if that makes sense. There's a meridian separating two roads going in two different directions. 
my house was literally across the meridian if i if to get on the other direction of the street i would have had to go drive all the way around to come back to go in that direction home i see where this is going being drunk not being as <laughs> Let, oh it's quicker if i just drive over this meridian i'm right on the street and i'm going directly home there was no cars on the street i you know idiot when i tried to drive over the meridian my car gets stuck like a teeter totter over the meridian I yeah, try you're, to high, you're high you're high centered so yeah. yeah yeah exactly i try i get out I'm, I'm with two people from check and uh i try to push the car over to you know to get off the meridian so i get back onto the street and this as is soon the as team I get out, car push correct it. yes the team car please come they don't ask any questions breathalyze me i'm totally over the limit <clears throat> i ended up getting arrested I get arrested I go, and this is Prague, man. I'm in Czech Republic, Prague jail. This is ridiculous. Horrible experience, very dirty, very disgusting. I have to, I'm very embarrassed, obviously. I have to call my coach, coach called the GM. They get me out the next day. <clears throat> the story's in the paper. Terry Smith's arrested, drunk driving, bad image on the club. The club ends up finding me three salaries and I had to find a lawyer because this is a crime. Again, long story short, I go to court. I win the case apparently, but I'm still, um, I'm kicked out of the country for two years. I can't come back to Czech Republic because that's a crime and I'm a foreigner. Can't come back to the club. I also lose three salaries um, from, uh, from the club. But this is the kicker. They owed me three salaries. They didn't pay me. I was paying for free at the time. I wasn't getting any money. Oh, I was for man. three, four months. I didn't get paid. I remember, you're talking about an all-star at this time. The leading scorer in the league. I had no money. Um, the season finished. I'm still the leading scorer of the league. And they say, you must come back. You have contract. What do you mean? I have, I've been kicked out of the country. And you owe me three salaries. Listen, man. Keep all of the money, all of the money you owe me and just release my players rights. So I can obviously sign with an agent and start my career. That's basically what happened, man. So the first two years, I didn't make nothing. Basically no money, man. The second year, the contract was for $3,000 a month. They weren't paying me. I was getting paid $1,000 a month the first year. It was no money, man. I got paid no money those first two years. That is... I don't know. We've we've heard some uh, some stories about the beginnings of careers. Uh, this is uh, this is pretty high up there in terms of uh, severity of a situation. Also, the I, other thing is, is in my day job, I, I'm a lawyer and part of my practice is doing DUI and criminal defense work. And I've never heard of a story where a DUI has led to such, for lack of a better term, positive outcomes. <laughs> Crazy. It, wor it worked out. It worked out in that sense because it just, it, it, it put my back against the wall. Like, man, hey, what are you going to do? You're going to come back here because they, they would, they would figure something out to get me to come back in the country because they said I had a contract. I'm sure of it. But for them to know, like they could just play with my money like that. Like Terry's going to come back and play. He's got this talent, got this talented player, but we don't have to pay him. You know, it was a win-win for them. Yeah. That's but a good deal. I had to, uh, you know, let them keep the money to get me out the contract, you know? So if, if you're keeping score at home, 2008, you're in second tier league in Germany, uh, yeah. sleeping in a matchbox bed, getting paid right. peanuts and sharing an apartment. And then right. for two years in the Czech Republic, yeah. you're again getting paid peanuts. You signed your life yeah. away and yeah. you end up getting a DUI and then you end up getting off the team because of that after they weren't yeah. paying you for several months. 